just to start with a very quick introduction to who we are. So we, we were set up in 2019 by UK government and that came off the back of a, re a recommendation from the Green Finance Task Force, where essentially the recommendation was to create an interface between private finance um, and local public sector institutions. And, and ultimately that's the gap that we've tried to fill um, and positioned ourselves as that primary interface when it comes to green finance, having our roots in government, but but since growing to be a, a completely independent organisation, um, it has started off originally with some government funding, but have, so, have since spun out um, and now have um, funding from various streams, um, including Ashton, um, some from UK government and also from the City of London Corporation. Um, in terms of how we work and what we do, kind of three key areas. So number one, which is, is really the main reason we exist is, is financing green, and that's pulling together um, experts and coalitions to come up with financial solutions that can mobilise capital into real economy, real projects at a local level. Um, two, greening finance. This is more to do with the work we do around structural barriers. So a lot of this work is um, involved with policy makers, uh, regulators, etc. Um, and, and there's some, there's some good examples of that recently. And finally, we're a knowledge exchange. So broadly seek to um, expand knowledge, uh, training and advisory, sharing best practice across the different sectors that we work. Um, I'll skip through this, but in, we work in a very sectorial way. So we have a, a sector for the built environment, which is the area that I work in, um, which I'll cover in more detail later on in the presentation, one for transport and, and one for nature. So you know, the, the focus of these three areas is all essentially the same, which is how do we bring in private capital and mobilise money from private markets to support real projects on the ground. Um, I've got a few examples of, of the slides on, on some of the things that we work on. So within the built environment programme, we um, which is probably our most mature. We've launched a partnership with Greater Manchester Combined Authority, which I'll, I'll talk about. And then we've launched other products such as the local climate bond campaign. Um, had a question from George already on property link finance. So I can talk a bit more about that. In, in transport, we're doing a lot of work on sort of three key areas. So purchase and lease, leasing, charging infrastructure and battery technology. So how do we bring sustainable finance models and, and, and um, financial products to the market that are going to support those three areas and in nature which is probably our newest area of work um, we've done a lot of port leadership recently um, we are have the secretariat for the task force on nature related financial disclosures and we've recently re released a investment readiness toolkit uh, just moving on so built environment program so I'm head of partnerships in this team which um, really a lot of that work is spent working with local authorities um, we've kind of had a bit of a pivot over the last um, year or so where probably from the start we've been occupying more of a thought leadership space which has involved working a lot with cross-sector coalitions providing policy recommendations to government, working with different banks on product development um, and encouraging innovation in that sector. And probably this time last year, we had a bit of a decision to make to say, we've got a kind of bunch of financial solutions that we've recommended and we'd like to take to market. Are we sort of happy being in the space where we were sort of occupying that recommendation and thought leadership or do we want to pivot into becoming an organization that actually works to deliver some of these products on the ground and given that we're generally made up of a team of ex-bankers and operational type people we we sort of sided with the latter and our programs evolved now so um we have a number of different financial solutions and i'll, I'll talk about a couple of them um in a moment and our um operational model is to partner with local and combined authorities to try and deliver these on the ground and i think you, know, you guys on the call will all will all know things like the green new deal and other central schemes that have been well intended over the last period but haven't been successful for, for a variety of reasons and generally what we see is that when schemes are um putting at a national level and and kind of driven by a top-down approach they can become very complex difficult to access so 
by partnering with different councils, cities and regions, we're looking to really leverage on that local expertise and, and deliver a place based approach um, and ultimately then scale, scale our solutions so they can become nationalised in the future. Um, so just just a, a couple of points to frame and apologies because most of you will know this given the audience, but the built environment programme, so buildings account for 23% of, of UK's total emissions. Of these, 77% come from domestic homes with the remainder um, coming from commercial buildings. And in terms of perspective, we think by 2050, that means we need to retrofit 29 million existing home. It's a year, roughly 1 million a year. And in terms of investment needed to that, for that is 360 billion pounds. Those numbers are probably wrong and, and the research was done over a couple of years ago, but you know, the idea is it just frames the size of the challenge that we've got. Um, and I know that there are the different areas of the community that will need different support, certainly in terms of finance. So the types of finance needed to support um, customers in in social housing, in commercial buildings will be very different to the, the type of products that are needed to support customers in a more domestic setting. Um, and given we kind of work on behalf of retail finance, our primary focus it was in what's been known as the able to pay market. But th that being said, we are um, we're working on other things behind the scenes as well. So um, complex challenge requires a complex response and we sort of split this into three categories. So driving finance So number one, we need um, the different types of finance to support these different customer groups and different organizations, including local authorities um, that are going to be attractive and and help then drive the supply chains and drive the demand and, and, and you know, listen to some of the uh, questions that came up earlier. I think this is well recognized that all these three moving parts need to kind of happen in tandem. Um, there's a lot of chicken and egg conversations that I think it's easy to get dragged into. Um, in terms of green finance, what, what do we mean by that? So our definition is that green home financing is any type of retail financial solution made available to finance or refinance one of the following. So the retrofit of domestic buildings, the acquisition of domestic buildings or the self build and construction of domestic properties all to meet or exceed um, energy efficiency standards and, and decarbonisation. Matt, sorry to uh, interrupt. I think we've got stuck on a slide. Oh, it's suddenly moving forward. Oh, sorry, now. is it moved forward? Is that OK? Yes. Sorry, I'm we're on complex screen. challenge now. Is that the one you're aiming for? Us to uh, OK, on? I've just done that one, so I'm, <laughs> I'll move on. So as I say, that, that was the definition and I've Perfect. got just a, a few examples of the type of products that we're working on. So green mortgages. Um, so I think a lot's been said about green mortgages. Um, they have been on a journey over the last period from really early products launched by the Ecology Building Society um, to 2019 um, and, and 2020, where um, a, a, a much bigger focus was put on green mortgages after the, as a result of the Green Finance Task Force that concluded in early 2019. In 2020, GFI launched our green home finance principles designed to support lenders develop these products to be more rewarding and innovative and then Fast forward to today, we've got 50 green mortgage products on the market. So that's a that's a great start and it's a good example of the market responding to something that's not necessarily yet there's a high demand for um, and without any kind of central policy sticks to do that. That said, um, we would like to see lenders becoming a lot more innovative and rewarding on in this space. And this year we're about to launch a campaign targeting um, green mortgages. So our campaign will be more industry focused. So we recognize that while a lot of lenders are talking about this and products have been launched, 80% of our mortgages, nearly 90% in some sectors are delivered by brokers. And actually there's a, there's a, a lot of uncertainty, I think, between brokers um, and and the green agenda at the moment um, and actually do they have the right skills to be able to have these conversations with their customers so customers quite rightly and and for obvious reasons are talking more about energy efficiency talking more about the types of houses they might want to buy or the types of investments they might want to make on their their home for that they're talking to their brokers about that um, but not all brokers have the right skills to be able to have those conversations. So this week we're launching a broker's handbook, which has been um, 
boarded by all the main intermediary trade bodies um, and will go out across that broker market to help break down some of those um, barriers. And then beyond that, we are launching a new kind of CP uh, CPD training modules for all the brokers to take. And then we'll be doing lots of different events and, and industry focused um, roundtables, etc. later this year. And, and kind of the aim of that campaign is twofold is one to work with the existing market and particularly brokers to help raise awareness to help um, create a an easier access for customers into green into green mortgages but also using our um kind of our interface to financial services at a senior level to be able to to work with lenders to become more innovative in this space um and that includes being more rewarding on on customers who are truly investing in green um another one of the products that we're developing and it's been mentioned today uh, already is property linked finance so property linked finance is a product that will um, enable homeowners and landlords to uh, fund 100 percent of the upfront cost of retrofit the lending becomes sticky and is attached to the property rather than the consumer so um, if you think of as a homeowner if you were to take out a property linked finance loan, install energy efficiency improvements off, off the back of that, you would be responsible for servicing that debt while you live in the home. But when you move out of the home, that arrangement will pass on to the next owner occupier. Uh, it, it, think of it a bit like a service charge and how leaseholder service charge works today. So it will be a, a monthly payment spread over a long term to reduce the the monthly outgoings and then added to that the the benefits that they'll get in savings from energy bills this product um is based on a product called pace which has been live in the us for i think nearly 10 years now which has grown to be a 12 billion pound market so in terms of where the gfi are with this is that we've been kind of talking about this for the last couple of years and set up a coalition in the middle of last year to start looking at what could a UK PLF proposition look like. Um, we finished the end of last year with an, a kind of outline proposition document and then since then have, at the start of this year have kicked off um, a, a project with lots of different consultants and, and stakeholders across financial services and different parts of the sector. Um, so we have a kind of proposition, we have an operating model delivered. The next things that we need to do are to look at how um, how we would take this product to market. So we we're currently working with uh, banking partners to bring on a formal banking partner to the project that would help us deliver this in the UK. Um, and later this year we hope to kind of conclude that initial part of the project and then take it through regulatory scrutiny ahead of launching some pilots um, maybe at the beginning of next year. Um, another final piece um, in terms of some of the work that we've done over the last few years around local climate bonds. Um, I think many of you will come have come across these in some way shape or form on this call but essentially local climate bonds are a product where local councils can raise uh, debt from their citizens by crowdfunding so citizens can invest as little as five pounds and the, the the proceeds of that fundraise goes towards net zero projects from a council's perspective the way that the debt instrument works is it's priced below their normal level of borrowing from the public works loan board and from an, from their perspective it's a great tool to engage with citizens around the the green agenda I won't go for everything, but you can see some of the projects that the funds have been used on there from anything from solar PV on council roofs to nature improvements, EV charging infrastructure, etc. So this slide is slightly out of date now. So we had um, issued six. Um, we've had two more that have recently announced. So that's Westminster and Lewisham. And we've got West Berkshire who have announced that they're going to do a second fundraising round uh, and really you know what, what we're trying to do here is is create a bit of a new market so some of the initial uh, pilots that we've done the fundraising have been relatively modest certainly in terms of a large council or, or combined authority but actually by doing some of these initiatives now what we can do is start to grow the investor pool um, gain confidence raise awareness and and kind of in the future we see crowdfunding from citizens being a, a key makeup in terms of where where councils draw in funding um, from to, to, to support net zero where today by and large it's 
usually all from either prudential capital or public borrowing to opening up new markets, including commercial finance and uh, borrowing from citizens. And then I think the, the final piece I'll just cover quickly is our partnership with, with GMCA. So um, as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, what we're trying to do as an organization is pivot um, into place-based partnerships. And, and this essentially involves partnering with um, cities, regions, local authorities, combined authorities to try and um, deliver the financial solutions that we've developed with the market to support um, their, their strategy around net zero. The first project is is focused on the built environment, um, but equally we're talking to other councils about how some of our products can support transport changes and, and, and nature improvements, um, etc. So we'd worked with the GMCA for a number of years as we'd sort of been developing our demonstrator projects and in parallel with that, Andy Burnham announced the, the retrofit task force in Greater Manchester with some really ambitious targets set. So we were brought on board as, as the finance partner um, looking to deliver some of these solutions at scale, which are all slightly different, but are all aimed at doing the same thing, which is how do we how do we um, provide attractive sources of, of finance to homeowners as they start this retrofit journey? And I've covered some of them already, which I won't go through in detail. Um, but in terms of financing retrofits, they're working with the council on their kind of customer facing retrofit scheme and looking at bringing different types of low cost finance finance models into that. I've touched on the green mortgage campaign, which will kind of have a focus on Greater Manchester, given our partnership with them, but we'll also be doing things nationally. We've we've uh, already introduced a proposal to raise a, a um, to issue a local climate bond from the GMCA, which will the idea is to fund the purchase of some new electric buses. Um, and then we have um, green rental agreements and property linked finance that I've um, mentioned already. Um, in terms of, OK, thanks. In terms of media coverage, um, I won't go through the slide, but we got a lot of information and I've got a little bit more information on the products here, but I won't dive into that now into the interest of time. So, yeah, I think, you know, we, we it's been a really interesting period for the GFI as we're as we're kind of evolving our own model and looking at how can we um, move into a doing space and really to support local organizations on the ground and you know we couldn't do that without the support we get from Ashton and others so